Well, this is day two, and right in the background there, if I zoom in a little bit, that's the entrance. And we're driving all the way around the field, five mile an hour, nice and quiet, nice and slow. And then we, this is the riverside, and um, for the first time in this festival, you're allowed to actually park behind your peg. I'm pretty much behind your peg. So uh, this is my peg, I'm on peg 23. One off the end peg, I've got Steve Townsend downstream of me again, and he's a downstream end peg, there we are, B23. Looks like some that's died, but I'm pretty sure that's red paint. <laughs> I've not massacred a sheep on that stake. And uh, supposed to be all right here, so uh, I'm certainly at the better end of the section. Um, the peg to my right had a weight yesterday. Uh, so no, it was an eight pound off my peg. I think there was a, a, a six or a 12 pound to my left and a six or a 12 pound to my right, I think. So we're in a decent area because above that there was three pounds and one pounds. But the fish at this in this river, they, they swim a lot, you know, and uh, after, after a day of bait going in, they can definitely be more mid river and that if they want to go on the feed. So uh, it definitely happens on this river. They move around quite a lot. And Matt Godfrey's about five pegs above me and Gary Pook's about three pegs above me in my section of eight. So, uh, so there's gotta be some fish there and there, no mugs are they, so. <laughs> um, so uh, but yeah, it looks all right. Looks a bit weedy on the inside. Doesn't look like I can get a platform in there. Um, but look, I've been told there's a bit of depth on the inside, which is a good thing on this river. There's a little, uh, uh, I don't know if that goes to a, a marina or a little, little confluence or something so, so uh, but yeah looks good doesn't it so uh, all positive and all nice and happy for uh, for the onslaught I've got uh, I've only got three and a half hours to set up so hopefully I'll be ready in time <laughs> and uh, oh, he's, uh, he's quite close to me uh, this will be Steve Townsend on the next peg let's have a look at his peg whilst we can so uh, B24 so there's a big gap between us and the column pegs, which are the other side of the hedge. Some fish move. Oh yeah, big weed bed on the inside. That could be interesting. It looks a bit pikey, doesn't it? You see all those weeds? That's really thick. Apparently they raked it. So, uh, oh, it's uh, Abingdon Marina, that is. So, uh, beautiful place. Very well-to-do area. Got to be rich to live in Abingdon, as my mate Paul Glenfield would testify, being a builder. <laughs> we'll give it a go. There you are, boot full of gear, <laughs> platform, drills, worms. Uh, I brought some bread just to try on the hook if it's a bit funny and I'm struggling to walk the M. So uh, it can work. We used to do that on the canal a little bit. Uh, chest waders in there, 10 litres. That's full to the brim with my ground bait, which I always bring pre mixed. Um, saves time and just make sure I've got my mix dead right and haven't ruined it. And it uh, just gives it time to settle. I don't want it too active. And uh, a bit of emp in there, cooked up a bit more emp last night. Fully up, milkers weren't brilliant, so I've cooked some more up. And uh, yeah, we'll give it a go. Rigs, I've got two whips set up now. I've got a 0.4 gram bleak rig and a gram and a half um, deck rig. I set like a gudgeon rig, nice pencil float. That's for um, boshing it in five meters to hand. And, uh, and then I've got a two gram, gram and a half, three quarter, and a 0.3 gram for my long line and I've also got a short line grabbing half rig for washing it down um, on the short line as well. Could possibly do with one more rig set up really but uh, I think I've run out of time believe it or not with three hours to set up. Daft then it. We'll, uh, that's all we've got. Same again, same as usual. Maggots, custards, him. Same old, same old. And that's the peg. Looks lovely. It plums up horrible. Um, so I'm gonna go 14 and a half meters with me long line just because it keeps going off and off and off and it's all uneven with rocks and everything um, and it just seems to flatten off a little bit of between four and a half and 15 meters and then i've got a line which is um 10 meters out eight nine meters out eight nine meters as well and then a chop worm line down there that's it one section on to a minute there's a lot of people balling around me well i just dared not because of the, uh, the bottom. Okay, well, we'll, we'll live by the sword, see what's what. Just to get the accuracy. Okay. 
before we cup out anything else, put some chopped worm in. I'm going to cup it because there's no flow. A bit more in this time. Some casters. Ten minutes down the peg. Another with that confluence there. See if it makes a difference or not. Cupping versus balling. I think if it was a lot flatter, I wouldn't hesitate to ball it, but it's not. It's horrible out there. Copying eight balls. I just don't want any doubts as to where my bait is. It's like this. Polish my pole. Got to my peg, found some baby wipes and polished my pole because it's so uh, it was so sticky. It's smooth as silk now. Smooth as a baby's bump. Just can't risk a 14 and a half. Anything going past my uh, feet. I'm still creating an area. Nothing's gone past where I want it. This is the most knackering bit. I suppose I should apologise as well for my best. <laughs> it's going to be 27, 28 degrees today. And uh, and I've got the worst farmer's tan in the world. So I'm hoping to get a bit of colour, you never know. Get these white milk bottle tops gone, because my uh, forearms are black as the ice space. So that's the plan, and the last time I wore a vest to fish, I caught 477 pound at Decoy Lakes. So you never know, it might be a lucky, a lucky mascot. To go. Where do you want that? There's so many funny reflections over there from all the houses. I'm trying to remember which one's which. Last one. We've got five hours. Good measure. I'm gonna put a pot of empty on a few casters. Just for good measure. Now, 10 minutes ago, no, 20 minutes ago, I was very fortunate. The guy who was on this peg yesterday came up for a chat. He had eight pounds. I think he was second in section. Like the guy to the right won the section with 12 pounds. Um, quite surprised when he told me no no bleak drop. He's just fished 13 metres all day. I don't know how he's done that. The way it comes up. I don't know where to start on that ground bait. Or yeah start on the ground bait. Because if there's fish there 
it'll be great. I'm going to start on the short line. Proper good in my grandma. I sat up thinking it might be a way of getting through all the. Uh, was a little bleak, but apparently there wasn't any. So, uh, anyway. If this slides away straight away, we'll be in business. Hoping for there. He says that he doesn't get another bite. Well, getting one roach first drop is a fantastic sign. And as he was saying, there are no bleak. I am gobsmacked. Part of me thinks. Should have had a half gram rig up for there then. If I had another five minutes, that was what I was going to just about set up. I've actually got it on the side tray to cut down. I can use all sorts of rigs on this, but I was expecting it to be a proper clunk, clunking rig. Just lower it in now. See, this rig is not right if it's just roaching the peg. I can get away with a much nicer half gram strung out rig. But I was really expecting it to be try and bosh it through the small fish. Steve's gone long through. I think I can't see the guy below me, Towner, because there's a big uh, tree in our way. He's trying to catch a roach first dog. Doing nothing. I'm going to throw a few casters. And a few nuggets just to start. Weed. Now this is a proper bagging rig, so it might be a bit crude. Like I say, I wanted to sell that for one rig, and I just stupidly filled my time with other jobs like polishing my pole. <laughs> but it is a throwaway line, this one anyway. But if, if it is a good day, then this is the line I want to catch on. I'm going to do 20, 30 pound of fish and this is, might be where they'll be. How can you catch one roach and nothing? Even if the rig's wrong, I should be catching a roach there. Let's let them drop through, then we'll go on a chop wheel. Get on the worm. What are you at, Steve? Roach first drop, can't get a bite. Hey, <laughs> come on, perch. The guy I was talking to said he had a few little perch whilst he was shipping out. So, uh, there's always some here, it's just whether they're filled up from yesterday's bait already. Perch fishing tends to progressively get worse and worse. Well, this is a disappointing start anyway. Yeah, we'll give it there's an odd tench here as well. I've seen tench at Abingdon before. So all sorts could come down that side. Come on. Dee -dee -dee. Dee -dee. I'm not gonna give it much longer before we uh, Straight on that long pole. Some people were catching really well from the off. You know, I think Brad Gibbons had ten pound in an hour, he reckons, and then Pike moved in. He's had next to nothing the last three, so so I'm not going to waste too much time on a line that's not producing. I want to be on them straight away. 
could let him settle, but I think you just got to plunder him whilst you can before the sun gets up too much. So this is my last little twitch. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Not a point. Mm. This should vary straight away. On the cobs map, we're not getting bleaked out here. I'm getting any fish at all. For that matter. <laughs> and the guy said they would not settle over his feet, and he wishes them top sort. All typical sort of roaching behaviour. Yeah. Right, no bleak, so let's move it up from the, like, the Gudgeon rig style of presentation which is normally the way you start off on the Thames because there's that many small fish wriggling nice ripple on it now so that'll be alright Better. Surprisingly deep. I'd like to fish 13 metres a bit. It was just going away and away and away from me. Just seemed to flatten off here a little bit more. Let's see if I've made the right decision or not. Steve's catching below me. firing hemp and casters over it. Hardly any flow. I'm not going to fill it in with casters, I'm not going to lash it in. made that mistake in the past. I think there's fish there and they're just being very uh, cagey so far, which is not a good sign. Caught the bottom there. Come off the bottom just to start with. It's going up and down, and there's all sorts of rocks and crap on the bottom there. That was my other problem. I'd like to fish a metre more down downstream, but it just goes up horrible past that. So I've tried to fish where the, the flattest run, flattest channel is. And say it's an iffy start, I think you can safely say. How many ads, Dave? Huh? Four or five? I've only had two bites. He's probably got a dozen, he don't want to say. You know if you've caught four or five. <laughs> I'm going to pop the three-quarter gram rig on as I am. Not 
the bottom. Three inch. Nice big one. You'll do. Nice big pink is easy. Nice. I think there's ropes swimming around all over there. And they're all egging each other on. Seeing who's going to start feeding first. Oh, Did not get a bite on a single pinky. Three or four inches off the deck is a worry. Could be a rock hard day today. Pretty glad I cooked it. Right, it's been a real shaky start. Um, Steve's catching plenty below me. Seems to be having a fisher chalk. No one above me is catching really at the moment. It doesn't seem to be. Bleak, I think we should just put this lighter strung out rig on just to see. Yeah, bleak. Not a good sign. Just put a pink here on just to see what's there. Put a half gram rig up. I've got it all right, half ready made up anyway, so probably wasted a minute top scanner. Just put a nice rig on just to see. I'll keep firing out some right there. Much nicer rig all round. 20 to 08, the other one was a 16 to 010 and it just felt a little bit fierce because there's nothing in the pack at the moment. But at least I'm confident now that he said it's a red. Well, good you. Right, okay. That's not the intended species. Right. Have a quick look on the choppy and then back out on that long line. I'm going to give this too long if I don't get so much as a, a rattle or a tap. Back on that long line. I can just see me scratching around that long line until they start revving up. I'm on my three quarter gram strung out rig and it's getting to the bottom lovely. <laughs> so much as a sniff. Normally on the Thames for two or three hours you cannot get through the small fish. And fish a nice rig if you wanted to. Send the wagger up in an hour if it carries on. Just for eight to ten pound, get your head down on the pole. I think he's trying to eat everyone's pole. Nice of him. Feet nice and lightly to begin with. Can't see any point in lathering in eight to ten to twelve grains of hemp, six casters. It's not a lot for a positive river like this, but we'll try and jam up. I don't want them coming off the bottom straight away anyway, if we can catch a few on the bottom. It might be a day they just want to sit off the deck. So it's important to keep some bait falling through. So my O10 bagging rigs are pretty redundant at the moment. Oh, that's right down the peg. Okay. 
Doing. <clears throat> that was a funny lift bite, I thought a guy skimmed me then. That's the first one that was over my feet. I laid it in and edged it through lovely. So that's it, the sign that was on the caster as well. are coming really well now. It feels like a crayfish or a mussel or something. Oh. It's a mussel. No, it's not. What is it? <laughs> well, look at that. I have caught the head of a watering can. Takes some doing, doesn't it? Well, the match is over. It's fished really, really hard for most people. Uh, so it sounds like I'm going to be well up, possibly winning, winning the section. So um, I've definitely got six pound, maybe eight, maybe more. I don't know. They've been lovely sized fish. Um, first hour was pretty rubbish, just a, just a three or four, five, six roach. That was it. And then second hour, brilliant, catching really well on caster. Um, as soon as you're laying it in, going under, and then. Um, Third, fourth, fifth hour. I've just been scratching around, and I've had I've had three, three, maybe four on the imp. Um, nothing else on the caster after that second hour, and everything else has been on a pinky. Um, messing around between sort of a heavy rig and a little strung out three quarter of a gram rig. It's deep there, so I don't want sort of depth. It must be about eight nine foot there. So, um, but yeah, there's just flif flitting around a single pinky, oh eight to a twenty. Um, and um, possibly could have fished even finer than that, but they were really, really fickle at the end. Um, and it just got worse and worse and worse. There's people reballing it around me and cooking in loads around me and all sorts, and no one's catching. So I just plugged away. I copped in an odd little ball with a few pinkies in, which has kind of helped, but it's put the fish off as well. And we've had a grebe going up and down as well. We've all had a grebe going up on uh, sort of seven, eight, nine metres out, um, which probably hasn't helped to unsettled the fish, but it's just been a really hard, patchy day. But it doesn't sound like they've caught, and it, unless they're, they're telling pork pies, it sounds like I've possibly won the section. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. 
Well, the best rig at the end was this 0.8 gram Dino flow carbon stem, quite a thin plastic bristle. And uh, that's to uh, matrix number four elastic through top kit and a bit. I've just got a string shot there all the way down. It just gets about 15 centimeters apart to end. 11's down the bottom, going up to sort of number nines further up. And that's in like the bottom, the bottom half, bottom two thirds. And that's what I've caught best on. Um, and the fish have been really close to the bottom today. They don't want to come off the deck. And elastic wise, at the end, it's been best using um, the original matrix um, solid number four. And that is through one and a bit sections, as you can see. I'll take the top kit apart. You can see it's it's uh, just tap there to focus. It's uh, through two sections. So that's what I've done there. It's just got braiding because I just think through just a tip section on its own is not enough. Um, so uh, it's one and a bit sections, and uh, through a puller kit. We braid up here using the puller, but that's just nice retention in it. That's what we do. And um, the other top kit, my heavy top kit, was um, six to eight through a full top top two. Gonna weigh that in. I caught it, fifteen meters. What is it? Hose. Um, a watering can. <laughs> I can't see. I'm blinded by the sun we use, John. Not my arms. <laughs> Yes, please, John. <laughs> We're over here, yeah? No ugly fish today, then, mate. No. I had a tiny daddy rock. <laughs> Eight, four, four. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, mate.